This is video from eight days ago of the Colima volcano in Colima, Mexico, erupting and sending a large ash cloud into the air. This volcano has been active and periodically erupting for the last two months now. The last major volcanic eruption on U.S. soil was Mount St. Helens in Washington State back in May of 1980, which destroyed 230 square miles of mostly wilderness, but some buildings too. What a lot of people don't know is that there is a large volcano underneath Yellowstone National Park. This volcano is active, and it is being watched 24 hours a day. Nature is in control at Yellowstone. Bison roam free, crystal clear water flows freely. On the surface, it's tranquil. It's what's happening beneath the ground that brought us here. So we are on top of the volcano. We're here sensing the moods and personality changes of the volcano. Hank Hessler has been a Yellowstone National Park geologist since 2002. Five years ago, the U.S. Park Service asked him to move his home into a residential area inside Yellowstone following a series of intense earthquakes. It was proceeding in an unusual way, so we went to an incident command system and talked about ways to get park staff out. No evacuations were needed, but it was a wake-up call. And all the heat that's coming out is due to the fact that we have molten rock, partially molten rock, within a few miles of the surface. The molten rock created by the volcano is the force behind Yellowstone's series of hot water geysers. There are 900 worldwide. 500 of them are here. And that's all tied to the heart of Yellowstone, which is the underlying volcano. On this cold, wintry day, the heat from these geysers meeting the cold air sends stacks of steam into the air. What you can't see but might feel are the earthquakes, which happen here almost daily. In 2010, when Hank Hessler was asked to move into the park, there were more than 3,200 earthquakes. The following year, that number fell to 670. In recent years, earthquake activity has been ramping up again. More than 1,800 in 2013, more than 1,900 last year. Some quakes are relatively small, magnitude ones. One last March was a 4.8. So just the frequency of earthquakes doesn't necessarily mean it's a suicidal place to be or live. Hessler tells me outside of California, Yellowstone is the most seismically active place in the nation. Volcanism is in Yellowstone's future. There's no doubt about it. The question many are asking, will it be a super eruption? Earth science professor Dr. Brennan Jordan at the University of South Dakota in Vermilion is one who wants to know. This is the, uh, what's called the Hartford Ash. The last time the Yellowstone volcano had a super eruption, 640,000 years ago, it covered eastern South Dakota in 12 inches of volcanic ash. This white chalky substance in Dr. Jordan's hand is ash from that eruption, found 65 feet below the ground in Hartford. It would be devastating if it happened, and it's due. Dr. Jordan tells me we've entered the time frame for another major Yellowstone eruption, although he believes it won't erupt for another 100,000 years. But the United States Geological Survey is taking the threat seriously now. This map, produced by the USGS last year, shows the affected zone of a Yellowstone eruption and predicts eastern South Dakota would be covered in five inches of volcanic ash, western South Dakota, eight inches or more. When the impact is as great as it could be, then we do pay a certain amount of attention to that. If Yellowstone had a super eruption right now, Dr. Jordan says crops would be lost, making it impossible to feed cattle, which would die. Grocery store prices would skyrocket as meat, grain, and milk would be in short supply. Face masks would be mandatory, as breathing in volcanic ash is essentially the same as breathing in small particles of glass. This is a super volcano eruption. This is you know, the sort of thing that Yellowstone is capable of. One thing that Yellowstone has taught me is that everything changes, so be careful in what you predict and forecast. In addition to Hank Hessler living on site at Yellowstone, there are monitors and sensors all over the park, measuring ground movement, ground temperature, the temperature of the water coming from the geysers, all of it to stay ahead of what's happening under Yellowstone. Researchers like Hank, who study both seismic and volcanic activity here at Yellowstone, say they are fairly certain that there will be no type of volcanic eruption here in the foreseeable future. But then I asked Hank to define foreseeable future. Now, what do we mean by foreseeable future? Uh, I would say, you know, a couple of weeks, and uh, uh, that's what I would say with certainty. The mystery here is what happens next. 
Life here seems to move slow, but geologically, seismically, and volcanically, things are changing and in motion all the time. And if you're in the business of being certain about things, like Hank Hessler is, it makes your job very, very challenging. The people who actively watch this situation seemingly fall into two camps. Those who think the Yellowstone volcano will never erupt again, and those who believe it'll happen tomorrow. The truth is no one knows for sure when it will happen again, but the experts we've spoken with and several others say it will happen. They also say should it happen in our lifetimes, it will mean hard times for a long time.